If you've seen the news in the recent weeks, you've probably seen an article or news story about blue-green algae killing people's dogs. But you might be wondering, what is blue-green algae, and what do I look out for, and why is it killing people's pets? Let's investigate. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Holmes and welcome to another episode of Pet Doc Sherlock, where we help people solve the mysteries of pets. And it's true, there have been reports of blue-green algae being linked to the death of people's dogs, but what exactly is blue-green algae and how do you prevent your dog from getting into it? Believe it or not, blue-green algae is technically not an algae at all. It's a bacteria called cyanobacteria. And the first part of that word, cyan, means that color blue-green. So it's a bacteria that does have that blue-green color. So if it's a bacteria, why are we calling it an algae? That's where it gets a little bit confusing because it is a bacteria, but it contains something called chlorophyll. Now chlorophyll is what we typically find in plants. It's what gives them their green color and it's used in the process of photosynthesis, how plants create their energy. And the blue-green algae, the cyanobacteria, uses the chlorophyll for the same purpose. It's a bacteria that gets its energy from the sun through photosynthesis. So again, it's a, it's a bacteria, not truly an algae, not truly a plant. But how and why is it harmful for our pets? First, we should note that not all cyanobacteria is bad. There are plenty of species of cyanobacteria, and believe it or not, there's some types that we as humans actually grow, harvest, and use as a supplement or additive to various foods. So what makes certain cyanobacteria a problem? And that's cyanotoxins. Makes sense that cyanobacteria, if they're going to produce a toxin, we'll call it cyanotoxin. Now, this toxin is very irritating to people, and it rarely leads to death in humans. So, if you swim somewhere that cyanobacteria is found, you might develop a pretty significant rash. If you accidentally swallow some of the water, then you might end up with vomiting, stomach cramps, diarrhea. And if you're really sensitive to it or have an allergic reaction to it, then you could have severe symptoms and need to be in the hospital for a brief stay. But again, it rarely leads to death. Now, for our dogs and cats, this toxin is a major problem. One, our dogs and cats are much smaller than we are. And two, they are much more sensitive to this cyanotoxin. It can affect various systems within the body. It can affect the neuromuscular system, leading to muscle tremors, seizures, and just general weakness. It can lead to issues with the cardiovascular system, so their heart rate will change, their heart rhythm will change, and they won't be able to pump blood and oxygen through their body very well. It can also affect um, important organs, such as kidneys and liver. Um, and it'll also affect their GI system as well. They'll have vomiting and diarrhea if they don't have major issues before that. There have been reports of dogs entering a pond that later it was found had cyanobacteria within it, and that dog died within 15 minutes of being exposed to that water and drinking that water. So, it's difficult to tell exactly how to avoid cyanobacteria. And that's the biggest question. How do we keep our dogs and cats away from this? We tend to see issues with cyanobacteria in the spring and summertime because it likes to grow in warm water, in warm environments, and it also feeds off of fertilizers and livestock waste. So lots of people are fertilizing their yards during this time, and cattle are moving from one pasture to another, and we typically put them in an area that's got water so they can cool themselves off. And if that water feeds into another body of water, then we can transmit cyanobacteria from one area to another. Cyanobacteria has been found this year in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, and several other states. Those are just the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. And there's even a cyanobacteria bloom in 
Lake Erie that is so large you can see it from space. So again, it, it, it's recommended to keep your dogs out of stagnant, still, small bodies of water, but just because it's a larger body of water doesn't mean it's safe. Think about Lake Erie. Think about that red tide in the Gulf of Mexico. And that's why it becomes difficult to tell exactly where this stuff is and how to keep your dog out of it. So the recommendation I make is, especially if it is a still, small body of water, it's been warm for a little while, and you can see a sheen on the top of the water, kind of a shiny, oily sheen, or you see obvious algae growing on the top, or obvious scum at the bottom of the, of the water, then don't let your dog swim there. Don't let them drink from there, just keep them away from it. Make sure you pay attention to local reports of parks or areas that they know they found this bacteria, and keep your dog out of, obviously, that water, but also the creeks and streams that are nearby. At the end of the day, the safest bet is, if you have access to it, take your dog to a pool. Or, if you've got um, a river or some kind of body of water that is fast flowing and continuously flowing, not like a drainage creek, um, then that's most likely safe as well. But again, I hope none of you have to experience this because once your dog has been exposed to this toxin, or once your cat has been exposed to this toxin, one, there's no real good way to figure out that they have been. There's no test for cyanotoxin. There's no a uh, symptom that is specific to cyanotoxin, and all we can do is put them on fluids and try to treat any of the symptoms. If it affects their liver, we try to give them liver support medication. If it affects their kidneys, we try to put them on high doses of fluids and, and keep their blood pressure regulated. If it affects their GI tract, we do the best we can for that, but ultimately if they've ingested enough of it and we can't treat them fast enough, then we can only do so much. So. Have fun this summer. Have fun with your dogs. Let your cats out. Don't worry too much because it's not that prevalent, but do be aware that cyanobacteria exists. And I would avoid any kind of ponds and lakes and streams um, that you're not sure about, and especially the ones that you can see algae and pond scum in. Hopefully this video has been helpful, hopefully you've learned a lot, and if you liked this video and want to learn more about your pets, please subscribe to our channel, Pet Doc Sherlock, and hit that like button. Until next time, remember to keep your pets happy and healthy.